Coming up next on Lunch Break with Dr. Broccoli, Dr. Brock will talk it out with a bunch of folks who just can't get along. It's conversation about disagreement that I'm sure you'll agree is great. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. My guests today are very diverse, but they all have one thing in common. They agree to disagree. Let's start with the uh, king of the jungle over there, Mr. Lion. Would you like to share with us today? Uh, sure. <clears throat> um, my name is Rick. Hi, Hi Rick. Rick. So I'm a lion, you know, king of the jungle and all that. And? And I have a problem with disagreement. And what is that exactly, Rick? Well, it goes like this. Every time I meet someone new, I, uh... You don't know what to say. Uh, no. Not exactly. I, uh... I want to eat them. <gasps> but they generally don't want to be eaten. <laughs> well, I... I mean, some do. But those don't taste so good. Too salty. I see. So you find someone that you want to eat, but they don't want to be eaten. That's right. Well, let's take this little problem of yours through Dr. Brock's patented five steps to reaching consensus. Uh, okay. The first step is hearing everyone's point of view. So your point of view is that you would like to eat this person. Let's say it's Joe over there. What do you think Joe's point of view is? You really want me to answer that? Please, Rick, let's work through this. How does Joe feel? Uh, he doesn't want to be eaten? Oh, that's definitely true. Okay, great. Next, we need to think about what's behind these points of view. Why do you want to eat Joe? Um, he smells delicious? Um, maybe, but is there something else? He'd make a tasty sandwich? We need to get to your real motivation, Rick. I'm hungry? Good, that's right, Rick. Just let it out. And Joe, do you want to be eaten? And why do you think that is, Rick? No idea. Rick, it's very important that you try to understand Joe's perspective here. What if Joe wanted to eat you? <laughs> okay, okay. Let's just say that Joe has an important meeting tomorrow that he doesn't want to miss. Fine. Great. So you're hungry, and Joe doesn't want to miss his meeting. You know, I actually am kind of hungry. I'm speaking hypothetically, Rick. I'm serious. I'm famished. Come here, Joe. I'm gonna make a sandwich out of you. <laughs> Let's try to focus, Rick. Sloppy Joe time! All right, time out! We need to think of an alternative scenario that you both can agree on. One that doesn't involve you eating Joe. No good, Doc. I can't sleep on an empty stomach. Okay, well, Joe, what do you think would be a good alternative? I, I think the cheeseburger is an obvious choice. Hey, come on. What else, Joe? Uh, m m m maybe we can order a pizza? That's a great idea, Joe. You and Rick can both enjoy some delicious pizza. I'm not really a pizza guy. Not enough meat. How about some steak? That's perfect, Rick. The next step is negotiation. Let's figure out the details of this new arrangement. Okay. Here are the details. You buy me a steak, I don't eat you. Deal? Now, Rick, I think that you still need to add a little to this bargain to make it fair to Joe. You know, compromise a bit. Fine. I'll drive. That's wonderful. You've made some real progress today, Rick. If you like today's show, you will love my new video. Let's agree, I'm an expert. Now available on Sparkling VHS. Not only does it contain Dr. Brock's patented five steps to reaching consensus, but it also includes exciting examples of consensus building from American history. Take a look. All throughout history, disagreement has led humans into all sorts of regrettable situations. In fact, we can trace the problem all the way back to an ancient scrape up between the hunters and the gatherers. You see, there have always been different groups of people with different views of what needs to be done, and that just inevitably leads to disagreement. Take our own country, for example, the United States of America. Our unique history has resulted in a very diverse population. We're made up of people who come here from Africa, Europe, South America, and Asia. And it's a huge country. When we're trying to decide what to do, we have the viewpoints of farmers in Indiana, bankers in New York, teachers in Florida, jugglers in Colorado, corn dog tasters in Iowa, car wash lifeguards in California, all with different opinions and priorities. So how do you suppose all these people manage to get along when they're always disagreeing? 
That's where the United States Congress comes in. They've been building consensus since 1789. Take a look at this commercial and you'll see what I mean. Conflicting opinions getting you down? Try compromise. During the drafting of the U.S. Constitution, smaller states wanted every state to have the same number of representatives in Congress. Larger states thought that they should have more. This issue loomed large over the framers. After using compromise, they created a legislature made up of two equal parts, the Senate, in which each state would have two senators, and the House, in which larger states get more representatives. With both groups satisfied, the framers were able to move on and finish the Constitution. So next time you're having problems with disagreement and want to make some progress, try compromise. It's delicious. Available now at the United States Congress. You know what would go down great with that compromise? A nice big helping of discussion and understanding. Just like I've been teaching that stubborn lion. The men and women who make up our Congress use compromise every day to work out their differences. Some of these compromises were so important they put the word compromise right in the title. In 1833, South Carolina was so fed up with paying certain taxes, called tariffs, that they were talking about leaving. That's right, seceding from the Union, Splitsville. That's when Congress passed the Compromise Tariff of 1833, which lowered those taxes just enough to keep South Carolina on our team. I know some cauliflower up there, so personally I'm glad they did it. That's how they roll in the Congress trying to work out differences and find acceptable compromises every day on health care, pollution, civil rights, national parks. I could go on. Almost every major bill ever passed by Congress involved some degree of compromise. That means neither side always gets to have it their way because there's always a little give and take. Just like the way we get along with our neighbors every day. It's the process that's needed to govern our diverse country. Rick, what have you done? Well, look, I told you people I was hungry, but nobody wants to get eaten by a lion. So then this happened. Well, folks, it looks like that's all you get to see of the video today. But remember, it's still available now for only $19.95. Hey, Dr. Broccoli, I think I figured out this compromise thing you keep talking about. You say your video costs $19.95, but I don't think it's worth a penny over $7.95. Do you think we could talk it over and maybe we could agree to compromise? You know... Each side giving in a little bit until we decide I only pay maybe twelve ninety five. Yeah, I wouldn't pay twelve ninety five for that video. So what do you say, Doc? We got a deal. Well, I um. You look really good in that video, by the way. Like, delicious. You ever want to just cover yourself with cheese and hop in the microwave? Well, I uh, I uh, oh, what's that? Is that music I hear? Looks like we're out of time, folks. But thanks for watching, and be sure to tune in tomorrow when my guests will be Optimus Prime and Megatron. I'm told they have some issues to work out. See you then.